Glory be to God. I want to get a little technical with you according to God's word in 1 John 3, 8. Let's get a little technical for a moment. And um, in uh, the 1 John chapter 3, verse number 8, Wyclef, he was a guy that translated God's word to English back in the year of 1388. And he starts that verse off with, he that doeth sin is of the devil. That's what um, Wyclef said in 1388. And then in 1526, you have Tinsdale, who also translated God's word to English in 1526. And he said that he that committeth sin is of the devil. And that's the same thing that the King James Version actually says, which is actually in um, 1611, when King James Version actually came up and it says, he that committeth sin is of the devil. So let's look at that word committeth or even doeth and let's see what that word means. If you grab your Strong's Concordance and we know that the Strong's Concordance was from James Strong. So if you look at the Strong's Concordance and um, you look up that word committeth, it gives you the reference verse 40 or the reference number 4160 and its Greek word it's spelled P-O-I-E-O -E and its definition says to make or do. Now James Strong also tells you to compare to the reference verse 4238 and that Greek word which is totally different from 4160 4238 Greek word spells P-R-A-S-S-O and that Greek word means to practice now what most translations or modern day translations has done is used the Greek word 4238 and they put practice into the um, the modern day translations today. So let's see what practice actually means. Now in the Strong's Concordia it goes on and says to perform repeatedly or habitually thus differing from 4160 which probably refers to a singular act. Now you just heard what that's what James Strong wrote. He's telling you that this is different from 4160 which may refer to a singular act. So let's get the understanding that the King James Version and the two versions that I've listed before, Wyclef and Tinsdale, they use the word doeth and committeth, both referring to a singular act. These modern day translations use the word practice. Now, this word is not inspired by the word of God because too many Christians has fallen away because of they, this word practice that is in these translations. They look at this word and they lean on their own understanding to create what that word means. Because to this day, I've met no one who can give me a clear answer on what practicing sin is. What is a specific amount of of sins that would equal a practice. No one has been able to give me a legitimate answer according to God's word. And even by using that word practice, they themselves are still practicing sin because we all know that God is not confined to time. You know, I said once before, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day to God. So God is not confined to time. So if you have someone that is a, a, a child molester and he gives his life to God, supposedly professing Christian, that gives, him, get, gives his life to God and he now no longer molests childs 10 times a year, he's dropped down to once a year. Now, even with once a year with him committing that child molestation, he is still practicing sin according to God's understanding because he is still in a habitual pattern. Every year he's repeating that sin every year over and over again. So if one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day to God, it doesn't matter. It's still a habitual pattern. Do you understand what the word of God is saying? You must stop. You cannot justify your continual walk in sin by saying, well, unless I'm practicing it, because there's no clear definition on the word practice. But even with that word, you are still practicing your sins. And that makes you of Satan. You must stop your sins. You must cling on the power of the Holy Ghost to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You gotta have faith, my brothers. You gotta have faith. In Galatians chapter number five, it mentions the, li the list of the works of the flesh. 
And then Paul says, and such like of which I've told you and before, as I've told you in the time past, that they which do these things, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the God. Through the Holy Spirit, the word practice was not used here. But he said, they which do these things. So if you believe that you are saved and you are still doing these things, you must understand that you are not saved. There is no once saved, always saved, my brother, if you are still doing the works of the flesh. For your father is Satan. Get rid of that false doctrine that you are in. There is no sin after conversion. There is no sin after you are saved. For you have repented and stopped. I'm telling you, my brothers and my sister, flee this false doctrine. Flee that Bible that uses the word practice. What do that word mean? I pray, I pray, I pray that you can understand what the Word of God is speaking. The Word of God is speaking of one sin. It did not say Adam and Eve practiced that sin before they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve transgressed once and God kicked them out. Thank you.